What is going on guys? We are back playing some more Surviving with Thermal Expansion. Uh, today guys, we're going to be messing around with the Induction Smelter, which is actually already going to be replacing our Pulverizer and Redstone Furnace setup. Now this is only two episodes old. We made it in the first episode, first thing we did, and we're already replacing it, which might seem a little bit crazy. There's probably better stuff we could be doing right now with the resources, but if we set up the induction smelter now, we can start collecting its secondary output, which what we're going for today is going to be rich slag. You could just use it to get slag, but I want to stockpile rich slag that we can use later on, whether it is for the phytogro that I talked about last episode, for the arboreal extractors, not really going to get into that right now, but it's basically a fertilizer that would make our power setup much better. Or if we just want to use it for better ore processing to get, you know, three times ore using that along with whatever ore we're processing. So it does have many great uses, so it can't hurt to start stockpiling it very early on. And it really won't hurt us that much because the only difference between the two setups would be the secondary outputs change a little bit. The pulverizer has a chance of giving us a random dust or not really random. It corresponds to the ore. Um, but it could give us a secondary dust, and that's pretty nice early on. You get an extra ingot here and there, but uh, we're trading that, of course, for the rich slag. And on top of that, we do need to process sand from a pulverizer, and that's going to come from an igneous extruder, too, for the induction smelter setup. So it does require a little bit more, you know, kind of stuff working around it, but all in all, I think the rewards will be a lot better, and we actually will get to look into a couple of the upgrades that will make it even more efficient. So... We should probably jump into doing some of the crafting, so instead of me rambling on about this, we can actually start working with it. First things first, we need to craft the induction smelter itself. And uh, there is a lot of stuff in here to craft. I would say the most expensive part is going to be the invar. I did a lot of different, you know, sets of crafting this, I guess, because I didn't realize uh, I'd need so much. But I would say go and make like half a stack. You'll eventually use it, and it's really annoying if you're trying to make the blend and just constantly running back and forth between the pulverizer and crafting and then smelting. So I would just make half a stack, don't make the same mistake I did, and do it in like six different sets of, you know, six. So uh, we're actually going to have to sleep soon too because it's becoming nighttime. I didn't realize I was rambling for so long, but we can make the induction smelter first. I don't actually think I'm going to die right now. Uh, so here we have it, induction smelter, and you can see it's basic. We are going to be making some upgrades to it today, but this requires the biggest chunk of invar that you're going to have. So we are going to make the invar gears and the machine frames. So we'll get the tin gear. I should probably stockpile some of these machine frames too, because we use them on pretty much everything. And then we are just missing out on the reception coil and I don't need to be told the recipe for a bucket. So there we go. We've got the induction smelter. And now I'm going to sleep just so we don't get killed by anything. Pretty shameful last time when I died. I was actually kind of annoyed because I lost a fair bit. Uh, but now we've got the induction smelter. And we are actually going to let this run for a little bit. I'm going to place it down right here. It doesn't really matter where it goes. I just need it to have power. And what we're going to do is pull out the sand and cobblestone from here and throw it in. So the cobblestone, we're going to turn off the locked flux slot there. This will be turned on if we wanted to put in some of that rich slag that I was talking about and get it to process or even better. But right now we're going to process cobblestone and sand and you will see that the real only purpose of this is not going to be for the main output, which will be, uh, I think it's stone bricks, but instead it's going to be for the secondary output of slag. Now we need two of these because the next thing we're going to be crafting or one of the next things uh, is going to require that we have something made from slag. So there we go. I'm actually going to pull these out and stop this whole thing right now. But if we go in to the redstone furnace and throw slag in there, we're going to get something. I forget the name of it. It's like, uh, what is it? Uh, rock wool. So a little bit weird, but we do need this for crafting one of the upgrades. So we only need two of them, but you are going to need to put down the induction smelter and use it first before you finish all of the crafting. So the next thing that we are going to be making should be one of the upgrades. And if we look down here, it should be... Uh, the upgrade, let me see if I remember what the picture looks like right here, the auxiliary sieve, I think it's how you pronounce it. So this requires four bronze ingots, a redstone servo, and then rock wool, which of course is what we were just getting. So I believe that is the stuff right here. And so we can go in and craft that. I don't need to pull up the recipes for all this stuff, but there we go. We got the servo, the ingots, and then the light gray rock wool. Now, the auxiliary sieve, if we look at it, it's affecting the machine's secondary output, and it increases the chances of a secondary product, but additionally, energy uh, or additional energy is required per operation. 
Now you can add in multiple auxiliary sieves. I believe you can add in four and they each will have a, you know, a bigger effect. So adding only one in gives us approximately like a 1.18% uh, or 1.18 times multiplier on the current output percentage. So not really a huge difference if it's 5%, but once you start getting up to like the gold output chance of the rich slag, which is 20%, it can start making a pretty big impact, but it goes up from 1.18 all the way up to 2.5 times the chance of getting it when you have four in. The only downside is that the energy increases 10% each time. So we're gonna be spending 10% more energy per process. Uh, and if we got all the way up to four, we'd be doing 40% more energy. So that's the main reason I wanted to get the energy setup going and pretty much have a full energy cell before we switched over. So what we need to do right now is actually make it so that we can add an upgrade onto the induction smelter because if we put the induction smelter back down right now and look at it and go to augments, it can say that we have an upgrade required. You can't even click on this to open it up because it's a basic machine and that's why I pointed that out before. If it's basic, you will not be able to add any upgrades to it uh, or augment. You need to first make it the next tier, which if we look, I actually don't know where they're shown. We just look at this as general right here. Uh, it's on the second page. You have different upgrade kits. So adding each of these upgrades on should allow it to have more augments added to it. Um, but we're going to just start with the hardened upgrade kit because that will allow us to add one augment to it, which of course will be our auxiliary sieve. So to do this, you need again more invar a bronze gear and two redstone. So not really that expensive, but it does require some invar. So we'll make the bronze gear first and then we can get the hardened upgrade kit. And to put this on, all you're gonna do is place it down and then right click with the kit. So I'm gonna start getting rid of all of this stuff over here. Uh, let's pop that off, that off and that off. So we will put the induction smelter right there and we will end up setting the output Let's just get rid of pretty much all of these except this side. The output will be there. And then we are going to have multiple inputs. But for now, we're just going to make it so the input is right there on the top. Um, should we move this up one? Now that I think about it, possibly. Uh, the only reason I say that, you know what? We're not going to move it up one. We are not going to do that. So I'll explain what I was just trying to think about there for in a little bit, I guess. But we're going to move this chest over in front of it. So we'll pop that right here. I know that seems kind of like a pointless move, but uh, it's just because of how I want this to actually be set up. So let's click all this stuff back in there. And I believe we didn't miss anything. Yeah, so that should be fine. And we need to make it so that the front... Oh, you know what? We can't put an output on the front. Oh my gosh. Totally spacing out. Okay, so we need to turn this then like that because I don't want an output on the back side there. So this will be the one that's outputting to the chest. And then the output on this side should be set to the secondary output. So there we go. So the secondary output will be coming on this side. The first output will be put in here. So whatever ingots we're getting. Um, so this is where we're going to store the rich slag eventually. And then here is where we are going to need to input the sand. So we're going to get rid of this. The sand will go there. And then we'll need to input on one more side. So we're actually running out of sides. The actual stuff. So I'll have to think about that in a second, but we'll, we'll cover all the other bases first. So we need to get the pulverizer going with the igneous extruder, which still needs to be crafted. Whoops. And that is how we are going to get the cobblestone, which will then uh, give us the sand that we need for every ore process. So uh, this is actually going to be the stuff up here. Grab all this out and then you're going to need a bucket of water and a lava bucket. Uh, you don't need to refill it or anything. If you're going to make like obsidian, I think with it, you need to refill it uh, every time you make a block. But this is pretty much able to just infinitely generate cobblestone. Uh, that is the one useful part about it. So we'll grab the igneous extruder and pretty much everything in here is going to need to be crafted. Uh, going to have to go through all of these. I'm probably going to start doing some of the crafting off camera just because now we're getting through pretty much all of the parts. Oh, did I forget some of the iron? I did, okay. I don't think I had forgotten anything up until this point on any of the crafting. It's been almost three episodes, but uh, looks like I did flub up a bit on that one. Okay, and then we need the reception coil, and there we go. So now we have the igneous extruder, 
Okay guys, so I hopped off camera for a quick second just to kind of fiddle around with this setup a little bit and get everything in order so that it's how I want it to be. And so what I've done is I've run the power below these machines right here and then I placed down the igneous extruder and then the pulverizer. Uh, so the pulverizer is right between the induction smelter and the igneous extruder. So it's just going to go generates cobble infinitely, turns it into sand and then uses that sand. So right now if we want to look at uh, this it generates it very fast does not use any water or lava you just right click on it with the buckets to put it in there it's set to cobblestone and then it is set we can pretty much get rid of most of these uh settings right here all you need is the one output in the direction of the pulverizer then this is set to accept the cobblestone from the side that it's being pushed in on and output directly over to the induction smelter and the only thing we need to do here is a quick rotate of the sides just so that the front is facing. I think actually we want the front facing over here. So like that. And the reason behind that is we want an output to be on this side too. So kind of running out of sides to use here, but we should be fine. We just have to redo this a little bit. So we want the red to be outputting to this chest because that's the main output. Uh, and I believe that means that we want it to be, we can get rid of this. This output is going to need to be yellow then. And this side which if we're looking at it from here is going to need to be the input for uh, it should be just blue I think or green yes yeah, so we want green there I think it doesn't matter which uh, side these go in on but we want the sand to be going in here actually I'll set this to purple just because these are basically just inputs for the top so this will be in purple and then we will have our ore going in here so everything should be fine the sand should be getting pushed over and I'll in pretty much just put the gravel either into a cache, which is just a big single item storage, or just throw it into a chest for later use. We'll probably want it eventually, so I don't want to just get rid of it, but it's not super important right now, so I think we'll just grab out enough oak wood to make a chest and have it just get dumped in there. So grab a quick chest. I know I have one in my inventory, uh, but I believe that is for, yeah, a crafting recipe that we're going to be using later. So we can put the chest, we'll put it right on top of it and have this output yellow to the top. Does it not want to push that at the top? Okay, it took a second. Okay, a little bit worried there, but no big issue. So now this whole setup should be pretty much good to go, but it's not ready with our upgrades yet. So what we need to do is add the hardened uh, upgrade kit to this and you'll see a little bit of a visual change when we right click on it. Uh, it's going to be, it should be at the corners to indicate that it is an upgraded version. So there we go. Block successfully upgraded. You can see it's kind of got that invar color at the corners. And then if we go to the augmentation, there is one slot. So we can throw in our auxiliary sieve augment. And now if we get a secondary output, the chances will be increased by 1.18 uh, times. So nothing crazy, like I said, but that's pretty much as good as we're going to be able to get it for now without investing a ton more into it in terms of power and resources. So the last thing is just where are we going to be storing this? And that's going to be in one of the caches, which stores a large amount of an item. It can store 20,000, which should be plenty. I don't think we will reach that in, you know, a long while at least for, uh, for where we are now, but we're going to make, oh, I guess I don't need, I guess I had a second chest. What was that second chest from? Oh, it's the input over here. Oh no, these are going to connect. Oh no. Oh, that's not good. That's not what you want to see. Yeah, we're going to put these down and they're going to connect up here. That is super unfortunate. Okay, so we will actually have to move this. Okay. Is this going to break? Yeah, so it'll only break that one. So we will have to move this. I think we're going to rotate it because I don't want it over in this area. So we're going to have to flip this whole thing so that it is... Is this not moving? Is there any reason why this one doesn't want to rotate but the other one did? Maybe it can't rotate when it's functioning. That actually wouldn't surprise me if that was the case. You know what? We're just going to break this and place it back down. Oh, and we're getting attacked. Oh my gosh. What? That hurts so bad. What? Okay, maybe we should sleep before we finish off this episode. Probably probably a good idea. That hurt really bad. Okay. 
So what we need to do is just place this back down in the other direction. I assume we couldn't rotate it because it was actually the process of running and that could mess stuff up. So we'll place it down this direction. There's going to be nothing going on on the top of it. And then the blue and red just need to get flipped. So red and blue. So that should be fine now. Cobblestone can go back in there. And then this should be the back of it, which I believe is this right here. Just needs to get set to a yellow output so that the gravel will go in there. Awesome. And then we put in anything up there. Quick rotate of that so that we can uh, have it face the right way. And then lastly, we are going to need to make the cache like I was planning on doing, which of course we'll use another chest. And then it should be, what was the recipe for that? I want to say, I thought I knew it, but I guess I don't. Where is the cache? Right here. So we need to make a servo. Oh, I guess I missed out another piece of iron. Crazy. Okay, so servo right there. And then it was like this, I believe. Yep, so there we go, basic cache. We could put upgrades on it, but we're definitely not gonna need them just yet. So we place this down, and then whatever we right click on it with is going to go in there, or whatever this pushes out into it. So I probably should have had one ore left that I could kinda use. Oh, you know what, there's copper right over there. So we can go over, grab this, and allow it to run, and maybe, maybe we'll get lucky with some rich slag coming out of it. The chances with this should only be 5%. So nothing crazy. Is there any extra copper around here? No? Well, that's unfortunate. Huh. Okay, well, I thought we'd have a little bit more. Uh, this is the one time I guess I should have saved some of the ore and not actually processed it. But we'll get to see the system running a little bit in action. And maybe we'll get really lucky before the end of the video. Maybe that's how... Oh, there's more right there. Okay. So we'll throw all this in there, whatever we get from this. Hope that we get a rich slag so that it'll kind of fill it up and... Let the process sort of start running. So we throw this in up here. And if I set the inputs correctly, it should get... Oh, there we go. Auto input wasn't on. So it gets pulled down. It should get processed. And... Are we going to get lucky? Oh, we didn't. Okay, so we still get the two ingots from the copper that we would. But of course, the secondary output changes. And I'm just watching. I want to see us get lucky, honestly. That would be a great way to end the video. But I don't think we will. Yeah, okay. So, unfortunately, we didn't get lucky at all. Um, but I will have a fair bit of rich slag when we come back next time. Because I'm hoping to do a little bit of a bigger, cooler project. Which will require me to go do some mining and process a bunch of ore. But that's going to be it for today, guys. Hopefully, you enjoyed the video and learned a little something. Should have finally fixed the outro now. Uh, to where the random video can also be put in there too. Um, it seems like you guys liked it, so that is awesome. But thanks for watching, guys, and I will talk to you later. Standing in a glass bowl At the end of a black hole Coal lost and upside down Faces rolling past me All my memories rolling vastly